In today's video, I'm going to test an RSI, MACD, and stochastic trading strategy to see how well it performs. We'll code the entire strategy in Python, optimize it using FreckTrade, and run backtests to evaluate its effectiveness. So, let's dive right in. To begin, let's quickly go over the key indicators we'll be using in this strategy. 1. MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence. The MACD is a popular momentum indicator that helps us track price trends and momentum shifts. It's calculated by subtracting the 26-period exponential moving average, EMA, from the 12-period EMA. The result is the MACD line. Additionally, a signal line, which is the 9-period EMA of the MACD, is used to generate buy or sell signals. When the MACD line crosses above the signal line, it's considered a bullish signal. And when it crosses below, it's bearish. 2. RSI, Relative Strength Index one of the most popular tools in technical analysis. Now RSI measures the speed and change of price movements, with values ranging from 0 to 100. But instead of using the typical overbought above 70 or oversold below 30 thresholds, today we're focusing on the 50 level as a key signal. When RSI crosses above 50, this is a sign of bullish momentum. It shows the market could be picking up strength for an upward trend possibly a buy signal or an indication that prices are likely to keep rising. On the flip side, when RSI crosses below 50, this indicates bearish momentum. It suggests the trend might be losing steam or turning downward, potentially a sell signal or a warning of further declines. Third, stochastic oscillator. The stochastic oscillator is all about comparing a security's closing price to its price range over a specific period. It moves on a scale from 0 to 100. And here's what you need to know. When the value is above 80, this is considered overbought, meaning the price may be due for a pullback or reversal, possibly a signal to sell. When the value drops below 20, this is considered oversold, meaning the price might be undervalued and could start trending upwards, potentially a buy signal. All right, now that we understand these indicators, Let's talk about combining them in our trading strategy. We can't rely on just one technical indicator as it often leads to false signals. By using multiple indicators together, we can confirm the reliability of our analysis and make better trading decisions. All right, let's dive into what needs to happen when we're taking a long position. First, we're looking for the stochastic oscillator to drop into the oversold zone below 20 and then climb back above 20. This gives us a signal that the price could be reversing upward. But remember, it shouldn't climb too high into the overbought zone, above 70. Next, we check the RSI. It needs to cross above 50, which shows that the buying momentum is starting to pick up. Finally, we turn to the MACD. We need a bullish crossover, where the May CD line, that's the blue one, crosses above the signal line, the orange one. This confirms our upward momentum. Once all three of these conditions are in place, we take a long position on that candlestick. To manage our risk, we'll set a stop loss using the ATR indicator and aim for a take profit with a solid risk to reward ratio of two. And here's a perfect example. Look at this trade. The price reached our take profit target just as we planned. Now let's flip things around and talk about short positions. Here's what we need to see before entering a short trade. The stochastic oscillator must rise into the overbought zone, above 80, and then fall back below 80. This indicates a potential downward reversal. Just make sure it doesn't drop too low into the oversold zone, below 20. Next, we turn to the RSI. This time, it must cross below 50, signaling that the selling momentum is picking up. Finally, we check for a bearish crossover on the mass CD. That's when the mass CD line the blue one, crosses below the signal line, the orange one, confirming the downward trend. Once all three conditions are satisfied, we take a short position on the following candlestick. Then, we manage risk by setting a stop loss using the ATR indicator and aim for a take profit with a 2 to 1 risk to reward ratio. And just like that, here's an example of a successful short trade. The price hit our take profit target. 
Now that we've gone over the strategy, let's talk about how to optimize it for maximum performance. To do this, we'll be using Frectrade, a powerful open source cryptocurrency algorithmic trading software developed in Python. If you're interested in learning more, check out the full Frectrade tutorial linked in the description below. It covers everything you need to get started. Here's the plan. We'll divide the data into two segments. In sample data, eight months. This portion will be used to optimize the strategy's parameters. Out of sample data, four months. This is reserved for testing the optimized strategy on unseen data to verify its robustness. Next, we optimize several key parameters to refine the strategy. Stochastic thresholds for oversold and overbought levels. Stochastic rolling window. Since it's rare for all three signals to align on the same candlestick, we use a rolling window to capture signals that occurred a few candlesticks ago, whether oversold or overbought. RSI and MACD rolling window. These rolling windows work the same way as the stochastic rolling window. If a valid signal condition happened within a defined range of previous candles, it's considered actionable. This increases the likelihood of catching opportunities. RSI threshold. To identify the best entry point. ATR multiplier and risk ratio. These are used to set effective stop loss and take profit levels. By carefully adjusting these parameters, we're able to refine the strategy and ensure it delivers consistent, reliable results. All right, now let's dive into the backtesting results for our strategy. We tested it on BTC Perpetual Futures using a 30-minute time frame over one full year. And here's how it performed. Total profit, a solid 158%. Sharp ratio, 1.49 showing a good balance between risk and reward. Win rate, 55%, which means more than half of our trades were profitable. Now breaking it down, long positions. Total profit was an impressive 118%. Short positions added another 40% to the total. But what about risk? The maximum drawdown was kept to 10.77% which is well within a reasonable range. And here's the cumulative profit graph. As you can see, it shows a steady upward trend, which is exactly what we want in a trading strategy. We used eight months of in-sample data to optimize the strategy parameters and the final four months of out-of-sample data to verify its performance on unseen data. If you'd like to explore this strategy further, be sure to check out the link in the description below. I've also developed a pair-optimized version of the strategy, which allows multiple trading pairs to run within a single setup, each using its own optimized parameters for better performance. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and share it with your friends on WhatsApp, Facebook, or Twitter to help support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.